future is really here. This is a hot swappable head-top display module for your helmet connected to an always-on rear camera feed, so you can always be fully aware of what's happening behind you, all without ever having to look down or back. This is the dream technology I've always wanted since I started riding more than 10 years ago, and finally it's available today at a reasonable price and works decently well for a first-generation product. It does have some quirks and small issues, but for the primary task of being a permanent heads-up display that acts like a digital mirror, the Moto i e6 does the job and does it well. The hardware installation process is pretty easy. I installed the heads-up display optical module by inserting its base plate into a small gap in between the two layers of the EPS foam on my helmet. But it can also be mounted either on the inside edge of the EPS foam or on the outside shell of the helmet. The optical module is connected to the base plate magnetically, so you can move it to another helmet with ease. This is the main processor unit, and it is to be mounted on the back of the helmet. However, the included helmet mount is significantly curved, which is a challenge for my Ruroc Atlas helmet, since the back of this helmet is mostly flat, and the tape couldn't make direct contact with the surface. So to address this, I used extra double-sided adhesive tapes and padded the concave areas of the helmet until the surface was flat enough to securely attach to the helmet. It's a bit annoying, hopefully future iterations will have different types of helmet mounts or more flexible helmet mounts so that it can fit better onto every single helmet shape out there. The camera angle can tilt up or down by 10 degrees at a time from its default position for a total of 20 degrees of movement, allowing for some camera angle adjustments to improve its visibility of the road behind you. I think this is a critical feature that makes the Moto Eye compatible with almost all helmets out there. There are two wires coming out of the main processor unit, one for the mic, which I already unplugged for now, and the other is for the heads-up display optical module, and I was able to easily tuck behind the paddings of the helmet, keeping them neatly out of the way. The only component left exposed is a portion of the same wire going into the helmet, but I think it looks clean enough for now. Adjusting the perfect position for the optical module is a bit finicky and requires a little bit of patience. First, you have to line up and anchor the optical module base so the crystal display lines up with your eyes vertically. Then you'll need to wiggle the optical module until it is slightly above your eyesight so it doesn't block your view of the road. Despite having a see-through display, it is hard to see through the projected image, so don't block your line of sight. Then you will need to go through the software setup process. There's one over the air firmware update out of the box. I recommend you do it right away so everything is up to date. The Moto I has its own software UI, which has a lot of features and settings. It could also connect to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but I'm going to specifically focus just on the live rear camera functionality for this review. The full review will be out next week. Check the description below for updates. The rear camera live feed can be selected to permanently show on the heads-up display, sort of like an always-on rear mirror. This is my favorite functionality by far as no other helmets or heads-up display system can do this. And you can also change it to a short-timed version using the included remote, where it only displays the rear camera live feed for only a few seconds and then switches back to whatever it is that you were just looking at, such as Google Maps. The rear camera can also record like a dash cam and comes with a 64GB SD card pre-installed. So I just keep it on recording all the time in case I need the footage. The size of the screen is similar to holding an iPhone at half an arm's length near the upper right hand corner of your field of view. You can push the display module closer or further away from your eye, but it does not change the size of the video output, just how much of it you can see. The official marketing says the projection looks like a 40 inch TV at 10 feet away, but to me it feels more like an iPad about 6 feet away or so.
The optical module's quality is pretty good. The display is 640 pixels by 400 pixels and is using a Sony Micro OLED panel. You can definitely see pixels if you look hard enough, but it is still clear enough to do its primary job, which for me is to see everything behind me clearly and that I can easily ascertain the make and model of vehicles even from mid to far distances, you know, for safety purposes. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the display quality. I can see cars coming up at me from a pretty far distance and what type of vehicle it is. When moving fast, the screen refreshes quickly and does not have any artifacts or lag. The only con I can think of is that you'll have trouble discerning the details of a car from very far away as compared to your naked eye. The camera feed is displayed in near real time. The one thing I was slightly concerned about is a possible lag in the camera feed. Playing VR games, flying FPV drones, or watching video feeds with a slight delay or lag would make me and a lot of other people very nauseous very quickly. I'm happy to report the rear video is good enough to be perceived as real time to my brain, so I did not feel any discomfort while looking at the screen. The camera feed is also flipped horizontally like a mirror. They did this so a car coming up on your left would show up on your actual left hand side, just like mirrors. Otherwise, a car coming up on your left hand side in the video feed would show up on your right hand side. This would be trippy and unsafe, but there is an option to disable this mirror feature if you want. The rear camera has a 120 degree FOV. While it's a great start and I can see a lot with this camera, the industry standard for a dashboard camera is somewhere around 160 degrees or more. I feel like the next generation of this product could use a wider FOV camera. But for my riding purposes, which is mostly a dirt bike in suburban neighborhoods, I feel this is quite adequate. But if I'm commuting on a busy freeway, I can use all the visibility and field of view I can get, especially into my blind spots. There is also a current speed overlay on the rear display, so you can see your current speed while moving, which is pretty neat. So far, this is the only telemetry data on screen. I kind of wish Motoi made more telemetry widgets on the screen, such as a trip meter, a compass, a, an altimeter, and temperature, etc. The battery life lasted 3 hours with the unit constantly recording and the screen brightness set to 70%. There's an option for an external battery pack called the Moto i MB4000, which gives you an additional 4000 milliamps of battery that you can attach to your face. I mean, helmet. If my math is correct, this would extend the hours of operations by another 8.5 hours. This battery size is equivalent to that of a modern smartphone, but I think Moto Eye's battery life can be a little bit better out of the box in the future. Personally, I think 4 hours of continuous operation while recording DVR and having a brightness of 70% or more would hit the sweet spot for most riders. But for me, it's more than enough on my joy rides as most of them are under 2 hours. The heads-up display is a huge see-through crystal, but its stem is not, so it will block your vision. So be sure to position the heads-up display slightly higher than your normal line of sight, so the stem of the heads-up display module does not block your line of sight while you're riding. Also, the HUD display is very stable and doesn't move around much, if at all, from going over bumps or uneven terrain, which I find to be very reassuring. The brightness can be auto-adjusted, but I just left it on 70% brightness. The battery at 70% brightness should last around 3 hours. The 70% brightness I feel is the minimum brightness for a normal day. If you are directly looking at the sunset or sunrise, and I mean directly, you won't be able to see anything on the heads up display. But if you just turn your head to the side maybe 5 to 10 degrees away from the sun, then you should be able to see the screen again. And also lastly, if you wear a hoodie while riding, it will block the camera vision. So I guess leave those hoodies at home. Honestly, for a first generation product, it is highly usable and much cheaper as compared to other solutions that are in the thousands. Plus, you can transfer the hardware from one helmet to another, so you're not stuck with all that expensive tech permanently attached to one helmet. 
the Model Y E6 needs some refinement for a better helmet mount and a wider FOV camera, maybe reducing the size of the non-transparent optical stem and some better English translations in its apps. But aside from that, this is the first actual working consumer rear view system for helmet available to everyone at somewhat reasonable price. The final question is, would I buy this with my own money? The answer is a resounding yes, and I would be happy to keep using it despite a few first generation quirks here and there, which does not detract from my overall enjoyment of the system. And if you just want to use the rear mirror function without the CarPlay stuff, you don't even need to link it up to a phone. But if you do want to take advantage of the entire computer that's mounted to the back of your helmet, then please subscribe as my full review will be out soon for the Moto Eye E6. If you find this useful, please share, like, and subscribe. Be sure to use the affiliate link if you want to make a purchase to support the channel at no additional cost to you. And keep the video playing to the end, because that's the only thing our algorithm overlord cares about these days.